Welcome back. Uh, this is Nick again. We're going to be working on the second part of this piece. Uh, we're going to be doing coloring today, and uh, let's get started. So as you might remember from the last um, work we did from the sketch segment, we got to this stage with a, you know, a monochromatic sketch, nothing too detailed, but just some nice um, compositional work. And uh, the client loved it. So we're going to go ahead and go to the coloring. So first thing I'm going to do is save, flatten all my layers, and we're going to build a new group for color. Now there's a lot of different ways to do coloring, um, but I like to do it <laughs> my own way, of course, which is uh, I, I make a folder, which is set to color, and I work inside it with just normal layers that paint over each other. Alrighty, so uh, usually I like to kind of throw down another gradient or uh, you know just a kind of background color to work over. Um, so I think in this case, we're going to have the ground be kind of reddish. And the sky is going to be, eh, we'll, we'll do blue for now. It's probably not going to stay blue for very long. Um, and, you know, we'll throw maybe a reddish orange or yellowish orange in there in the middle. And we'll see how this looks. It might not work, and we might change it, but... Eh. It's actually not awful. So we'll keep that for now. Uh, what we might do is just bring the saturation down a little bit. There we go. All right. Um, so let's start um, arbitrarily on the dragon, just because we all want to see where this is going. And this is a black dragon. So I guess there's not going to be a lot of color applied. So this is not very exciting. What we're doing right now, we're just going to be blocking in some of the coloring on this guy. And uh, actually, since he's we're using a dark color, he's kind of desaturating the piece. I think we're going to have to do a lot more work on him with multiply layers later on. And uh, as we move further away from the foreground, we're going to lessen the saturation, which is ironic because we're actually working backwards since he's a he is pretty non-colorful himself. Um, the more colorful we get, in, uh, excuse me, the further we get from the camera or the viewer's um, perspective. With the dragon, the more saturated it's actually going to get. We can use a bigger brush than that.
just coloring. Nothing really exciting as of yet. Coloring is actually one of my least favorite parts. I like rendering a lot better at the very ends where we're like, you know, doing highlights and shadow, but just sort of blocking and color. I I don't really love it. Okay, yay. So there's a dragon. Good job, team. Um, now for the courtyard. God, it's going to be boring, isn't it? It's going to be just stone. I'm so sorry. Castle gets a little love, but not a lot of love. Sorry, Castle. Gotta keep that aerial perspective. Gotta keep it blue. Alright. Alright, now... Uh, <laughs> we can do some of the guard. Now, the guards have red shirts. That's actually explicitly in the art order. And um, I believe it's a little bit of a nod to Star Trek. Get it? Wow, that's super saturated. Oh, man. Now this guy's more in silhouette, so we're actually not going to keep it that um, that red. And uh, let's actually bring the lightness down a little bit. Now it's kind of funny, when you work with uh, color layers, if you actually bring the lightness down, you are inadvertently desaturating whatever you're working with. So you got to be careful. You have to work your tones in before you color. Little helmet. Da, 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 da. This is going to be, whoa, that's super blue, too blue. Um, this is going to be reflecting the sky, and then, of course, El Inferno. I used to hate working with metal, um, just because I, I didn't really get it. I just thought it was this sort of enigmatic material that I could never get right. So I sort of kind of, uh, <laughs> I don't even know, like I'd like throw something down and try to make it look like I knew what I was doing. And sometimes it worked, and sometimes I it didn't. But uh, metal is actually very simple, um, at least polished metal. Uh, pretty much what you have to keep in mind when you're working is that Metal is like a reflective surface, so um, you know whatever's around it is really going to influence the colors more than anything else. So I'm not going to uh, go too crazy with this blue because yes, there is a sky above, which is going to obviously be having an effect on the metal here. But you have to remember, there's also this crazy fire blast going on, which is probably going to have a very strong effect. And this guy is not a noble. He gets a steel sword. Sorry, buddy. And uh, let's give him something that sigil on his chest needs some coloring. Oof, 
that's a little bit too greeny, gross. Yay, relative. So color is kind of interesting because um, what I was throwing down before was actually yellow, and it made it look green um, just because everything else is so red. So this color here is actually, if I sample it, it's actually this color. But it looks more yellow because everything else is so damn red around it. And you know, we can actually probably do something similar with the metal here. Ooh, no. Let's just leave that alone. How about that? All right, so for the gloves, just kind of have leather. Once again, these are going to be given a red shift because uh, they need to match everything else around it. Just sneak some color in. Sneak, sneak, sneak. And his, uh, we'll do the belt in a second. Yeah, buddy. Um, so something I'm curious about is, I know these videos end up being very long. They actually end up being like an hour and a half. Um, and I was curious whether you guys would prefer if I just fast forwarded while I worked and then narrated over it, or oops, or if I uh, just do it, keep doing it the way I'm doing it now. Because I kind of prefer doing it this way, but I understand if you don't have an hour and a half to sit here and watch me work. So uh, please leave a comment. Um, just so I have an idea of what you'd like to see so that I can make the viewing more pleasurable for you. Oh, I love doing skin. Unfortunately, in this case, it's probably not, <laughs> not going to get a lot of attention just because there's so much else going on and it's going to be in shadow. But we'll see what we can do. And uh, human eyes are actually pink. They're not really white. Teeth are never really white either. They're kind of bleh colors, especially if you're a medieval guy. I'm not going to be that mean, though. You can have a little bit lighter teeth. And hair. Well, these guys look pretty... Nordic, so I guess we'll give them blonde hair. And uh, for the facial hair, now I don't have to go crazy because this is so red already. This is going to look really blue, but um, don't worry, it's, it's not going to stay like that. Oh! <laughs> it looks like Tobias from uh, Arrested Development. That's so weird. Why is it doing that?
Yay. Oh, my God. All right, so we got our guy. Um, now you're saying, well, that was fast. Joke's on you. We're not done yet. Let's throw some foia. In this part where uh, if you're actually the one painting, you are allowed to make fire sounds. You can, you know, whoosh, do whatever you want. I find it highly inspirational. That's probably just me that I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna go on a limb and say that's probably the only one. Oh my god, your mouth is on fire. Uh, so I don't know if I'm going to do the eyes like this. Not today. Um, sometimes I do the, the eyes like these kind of like molten pits of hell look. But uh, I'm not really feeling that right now. I want this guy to be a little bit more. I, I don't know. I feel like when you do that, um, the creature looks really cool. Don't get me wrong. But it just doesn't look like it knows what it's doing. It just looks like it's sort of this automaton with like a engine inside. And I want this guy, like I said in the last video, um, to be, you know, really aware of what he's doing. He wants, you know, this is a mean dragon. This isn't just an animal eating or defending itself. This guy actively hunts humans and does all types of mean, nasty stuff, befitting a cruel dragon named Ash Eater. Whoosh, so much fire. All right, cool. Wow, that's fiery. And fire, as we all know, is not actually this red though it's actually so, sort of funny um if you want to do really photorealistic fire uh fire during the daytime is actually very very red very almost orange and pink um so if you get the chance you know just do a google search see if you can find like or you know take a photo yourself but uh see if you can find an image of fire during the daytime taken with a camera well i guess it would have to be taken with a camera but um you know, not a painting um and uh you'll get an idea that fire is actually very red on camera. Uh, it's very saturated. So if you want your piece to look really like a photograph, which I'm not necessarily wanting to do in this one, um, try that. And, uh, you know, painting photorealistic isn't always about painting what you see. It's what paint, it's painting what the camera sees. And there's a big difference. All right. working our way towards the hotter colors. So one thing I hate, and I see it all the time, people need to learn how fire uh, works. Please take chemistry if you have the chance. Um, so hot gases, unless you're burning argon, um, let's say, all right, let's, let's talk about carbon-based fire. So like if you have a flame source from a log or something, the hotter the flame or the hotter the gas, the brighter it will be and generally be more yellow. Um, so when you paint fire, please do not have the center of your fire be red. Please don't do that. It's not how fire looks. Um, you know, if you're purposefully doing it for some sort of crazy magical flame, fine. But that's not really what it looks like. It's going to throw people off. Um, I know that's how they do fire in Pokemon, but I'm sorry. That's, it's Pokemon. That's not really what it looks like. Please do not cite Pokemon as why you do certain things anyway. I'm sorry if I offended any Pokemon fans. Um, and if your fire is really intense, you can go to blue. But we're not going to do that in this stage because we don't want to. <laughs> sorry, there's no real reason. It's just it's, it's easier if you do it later. Okay, so yeah. Now, 
So that's pretty fast. Um, hmm. Let's do a little bit of orange, or maybe green, bluish. So I haven't decided what kind of, <sighs> yeah, maybe green, what kind of skin this dragon has, but I want the light to be shining through the membrane, and the membrane has to represent kind of whatever skin he has. So we're going to go with a greenish color, kind of like this, like, pond scum green. And let's just mess with it a little bit. Yeah, now you've got some wings going on. And who knows, maybe the dragon set fire to other parts of the castle. <gasps> I don't believe it. So who knows, maybe up here we have some a little bit of a hint of flame going on. I just don't know. Man, that stinks. Okay, so... uh that's some very quick coloring. Now you're going to say to yourself, man, that dragon looks like crap. It is super still sketched out. It's not detailed. Well, that's because we're not there yet. So uh, let's save as uh, one of, oops, not that kind of save. Iteration 6. Um, and I don't like to quite yet merge my layers just because, actually, nah, we saved. It's fine. <sighs> Alright, so this is all one layer now. But if I were unhappy with it, I can always go back. Okay. So we've got some colors in here. But, uh, let me show you how I do my highlighting. Don't tell anybody, seriously. So I use color dodge layers. Um, the secret's out. And the way I do it is, uh, you know, I, I'll choose a color that I kind of want the highlight to be. So in this case, the sky is going to have a bluish highlight. Now, if I went with this, it'd be really intense. So I'm probably going to mute it a little bit to like that. No, it's still too intense. There we go. Pretty cool, right? Let's see if we can't do a little bit on the dragon, too. Nah, it's, a little, it's too bright. And now this is where we start having a little bit of fun. So highlights are a really good way to show texture and add details. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to sort of be messing around with this and uh, bring the brightness up so I have a, a wider range to work with. The top of the dragon is going to be highlighted in a blue, representing the sky above. And um, sorry, I'm just going back and adding a little bit of highlight here just so it's a little bit more defined. And um, I know it's super messy looking. Don't worry, I'll fix it.
You know, I don't I don't actually think the dragon's quite ready. Cause this is not coming out just right yet. So let's do um let's do a little bit of a touch up layer. So this is what I like to call touch up layers. And what touch up layers are is when I go in with the uh you know the eyedropper tool and I'll just sort of just fix things that don't look quite right. So as you can see here, I'm going to get rid of some of my messier work, my little missed highlights here, and maybe I'll even add something. <gasps> I'll add more details. Doesn't that look better already? I think so. Ooh, he's mean. What a meanie. Look at the difference. get his eye. I guess it's in the right position on the skull, but I wanted to... I don't know. I don't like quite where it is right now. Maybe I, I don't know. There's something about it I don't like yet, so... Like, I kind of want him to have, like, an eye pupil, like, a little pupil there, but that looks really goofy. It looks strange. So we'll just keep it blank for now. Don't worry about that. Look away. You must be asking yourself if I plan anything when I work. Uh, that's why that was looking so strange. I didn't even notice I did that. Silly me. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, I do plan stuff out a little bit, but um, I do experiment along the way quite a bit. Because if I come across come across a really cool idea, it doesn't really seem too great of an idea to just let it slide. I don't know. Work it in, maybe. See what I can do. Let's 
So he's got a little bit of more narrow eyes now. I don't know if that makes his head look too small. He's got a silly little head now. So let's let's widen that out a little bit. And well, we'll just use this color for now. There we go. It's hot in there. Whew. Oh my god, where'd that come from? Uh, one area that I really like to fix is like teeth and spikes. Um, I don't like to spend a lot of time doing them at first just because I know I'm going to be doing this later. But uh, what I'll do is I'll just kind of throw down what I want them to look like in general. And then later I'll go back in this phase and I'll you know, give them these sharp little pointy teeth um, using the brush. I hope you all got that Monty Python reference. I'm sure someone did. Okay, sweet. I need to define the difference between these two a little bit more. But I can't use a heavy line like that. I have to uh, be tricksy about it. But uh, that's fine. We'll, we'll come back to the, the face a little bit later. Um, I'll probably build out a lot of those details using a multiply layer. Actually what I could do is uh, kind of There we go. I'm using hue in this case to differentiate areas. Better, no? So as you might have noticed, I'm a very detail-oriented painter, which is surprising considering how loose my sketch phase usually is. But uh, yeah, I like to go in and polish and polish and polish. The only problem is that as I work, I sometimes have to say, all right, Nick, that's enough for today. you got to ship this out.
What do you guys think of that face? I know I won't be able to hear any of your comments till later, but I'm going to ask you anyway. I don't like it quite yet. Uh, I feel like it could really be cooler. I can't quite put my finger on it now. I don't think I like this bump. Let's see if I was right. Eh, maybe if I... Kind of a more vulture-y thing going on. Or should I round it out a little bit, maybe? I don't know. It's just so open-ended. It could be anything. Something like that. And then, who knows? Maybe he, that nostril doesn't even belong there. God, I need to get control of myself. Actually, I like that better, so I think that was the right call in this case. Um, and now I can kind of give him some nostrils. Aw, oh, yeah. Roar, dragon. Yay, well done, team. We've done it. Okay, so that's much cooler. I really like the way that's coming. Um, when I paint teeth on the far side of the fire, uh, I paint them very light, and the reason for that is that they would be see receiving an extremely strong light uh, from the you know, gout of fire. I know there's so much going on right now. Alrighty, so that's some good progress there. Um, I'm actually going to cheat and tweak it though.
I want this dragon to look like he is really breathing fire, not casually yawning fire. Now the only issue here is that the fire is coming straight, and if you notice the neck actually is up here, so we'll have to uh, maybe widen this shot, or widen the jet of flame, or uh, expand his neck a little bit. And yes, I do think about that sort of stuff when I work. People sometimes do weird stuff with dragons, and um, like they'll just kind of have the dragon's mouth like slack open, and then they'll just have this giant geyser of fire coming out. And come on now, if you really were spitting fire that hot, I don't care how immune you are to the effects, you probably don't want your mouth to be you know pursed. You're gonna want you know get as much distance as possible. <laughs> Boom. Breathing fire. Man, Ash Eater does look mean. I don't think I'd want to tangle with him. Unless it was in Skyrim, in which case he'd be going down. My Skyrim character is ridiculous. I need to play a little bit less of that game. I'm actually very curious. If you play Skyrim, um, leave a comment. I am curious to hear what kind of a character you play. I play a. This is so. I'm so sorry. This is so off topic, but I play a Khajiit uh, assassin. I refuse to use magic or craft anything. I buy all my potions or steal them. Um, but yes. Anyway, if you do play Skyrim, let me know what you play. I'm always curious to hear. There we go. Now he looks a little bit like a dog, which I'm I'm actually okay with. But uh, you know, maybe we, he needs like a fin here or something crazy. And let's go in here and touch up some of this stuff. just so that my brush strokes aren't totally obvious. Hold on, Mike. Actually, yeah, I am, okay. I didn't really see anything happening. Am I losing my mind? Why is this not? Uh oh. Cuz I'm an idiot. Be careful when you randomly hit numbers like I do. If you don't have the right thing selected, uh, bad stuff can and will happen to you. Now some, you know, some crazy brush strokes in here are okay. Um, 
because they fire is really unpredictable and has weird things going on inside it. So it's don't don't make it too uniform. Don't make it look like you just sort of I don't know colored it all in with a block fill. But uh, I like to remove things that are too indicative of my brushstroke, which I like to call artifacts. Artifacts of my brushstrokes. So like, for example, if I were to just leave a dot like that, I'd probably fix it. Let's fix up the wings over here. If you remember, I was trying to make them tattered looking, and I succeeded, but they're a little bit too crappy looking right now. Detailing, detailing, detailing. Oh, I think someone just set up a firework or something outside. I don't know if you guys heard that. I hope it was a firework. And not somebody shooting off guns in my parking lot. Ah, yes. Spikes. He's so spiky. Now what I'm doing now is I'm spikes to the uh, little bit of tail that's swinging around, and um, they're just gonna be little little spikes because they represent how far away they are. Don't you love when your uh, hotkeys don't work for a second and you just sampled 15 different colors instead of actually laying down a stroke? It happens to me all the time. But I guess it could be worse. I could be working with traditional media and have spilled my water pot or something all over my painting. There are errors that are far worse. I'm 
annoying myself. I keep doing that. Silhouette is so much fun. Silhouette saves so much time. Alright, I want this guy. I don't think he looks badass enough. I kind of want him to look just really nasty and scary. And he's not really getting there. But spikes always help. Let's just keep adding spikes for a little bit, shall we? So he's got a little bit of a spikier back now. That's well, a little bit scary, but it's not scary enough. You know what? I said I didn't want to add horns, but maybe that's what he needs. I feel like there's something just not quite there. And uh, I don't know, maybe if I add them, he'll just look just get that little bit more aggressive bit that I've been looking for. Ah, oh, yeah. Hide those highlights. Bam. Now, he'll have little bumps, but not full spikes on his wings, because... Really? I don't want him puncturing his wings by accident. All right, so he is spiky, spiky, spiky. Save. Let's fix these god-awful things. And I know I'm accidentally... There's a... Oh, I guess not. I guess I did move that that uh, crenellation. So... I can do what I please here. Ha ha ha. Ooh, he looks nasty. Oops. I think I just hit the full screen button. As you might have picked up from the sounds and just different things going on, my I paint with one hand on the keyboard, one hand holding the stylus, and it's usually just a flurry of keystrokes as I go back and forth and sometimes my fingers stumble or the computer doesn't quite catch my keystroke or whatever but that sometimes does cause errors so I do have to kind of occasionally go back and fix things that I've inadvertently done
cool. It's starting to all come together, isn't it? You understand how I work now. Um, let's. Oh yeah, he's gonna have some spikes here. I know I can't stop now. Got to keep adding the spikes. Make sure to match. Matching's very important. Ah, uh, no. Click the wrong thing. There you go. He looks like a prickly pear. All right. Uh, now, I these kind of big crest spikes have been with us the entire time. I don't know if we want to keep them though. Mm, I don't know. Let's try some other stuff before we just straight up get rid of them. So one thing I want to do is. Something like that, or uh, All right, wax on, wax off. Mm, I don't know. I sort of feel ambivalent, excuse me, ambivalently about them. Faces are hard. Faces are hard. I'm just thinking for a second. That's why my brush is not moving. Um. Jeez, I don't know. Completely insane dragon who is out of control. The problem is that in my head, I kind of like, I associate certain movements with certain uh, results. So, like, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm just more of an, <laughs> like an animator by heart or something in my heart. But, uh, like, when I think of a dragon breathing fire, I sort of think of the eye going through a cycle of movements. Like, you know, it takes the breath and the eyes get kind of big and then it closes and blows really hard and squints. Um... But obviously, I can't really capture all that in a painting. So I guess I'll have to settle somewhere. So eyes also kind of far back. Let's you know. Let's experiment. How about that? Let's try some stuff out. 
we'll just paint this out. Just, you know, straight up get rid of it. Because maybe that's what's throwing me off. Maybe I, that's just that I'm stuck in that little configuration of the face, and I don't like it. My subconscious is saying, get rid of it, but I'm too hung up. Or as they say, I'm married to it, if you saw my other sketch. Maybe the eyes down here, like a snake or something. Why don't we try that out? That'd be kind of cool. A little bit different, right? But let's check it out. Let's see how it looks. Wow, it kind of looks like a shark now. <laughs> you see what I'm talking about? Like the fins? But he does look kind of insane. Something I like to include in all my dragons is a, a thing called tympanic membrane. It's the area around the uh, the eardrum. Lizards don't have ears like we do. They have these kind of dishes on the sides of their heads. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So that's wow. That's a huge difference, huh? But uh, I'm gonna keep going with it. Let's see where this goes. Imagine that these would probably be fairly um, silhouetted. I don't know if you know what I just did, but uh, essentially I had to, the outline of this was getting lost, so what I did was I just uh, added a little bit of contrast between the head and the shoulder area. Yeah. 
you know, let's save this for a second. Let's just fool around. Now the only thing that I don't like about this head is that the eye this far forward makes him a look a little bit stupid. And I don't mean like, that's a dumb picture. I mean like, he just doesn't look very sophisticated. It looks like there's not a lot of room for brain. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to just kind of yoink, see where I like, oh, maybe he'll have more than one eye. No, that's too crazy. Maybe like there instead, how about that? like it was never even there. And I'm going to fix this because he looks like he's sad. Now he looks like he's mad. I like that a lot better. I'm not going to lie. Cool. So I like the spikes. I like the new head shape a little bit more. Uh, I don't know why I just started doing this. It was sort of subconscious. I just kind of really quickly started doing this. I started adding pits to the back of these spikes. And I, I honestly don't really remember thinking about doing it. I just started doing it. Um, but I kind of like it now. It kind of looks like he's I don't know, like a little bit rotted. Like he's not really in the best shape. It kind of looks like he's not on his way out, but you know what I mean? Like he's not quite alive. And I don't want him to be an undead dragon, but um, I don't know. It looks nice.
man, he's so spiky. Jeez. Alright, so let's see. The head can stay for now. I'm not done with it yet. I I don't know what's wrong with me. I just can't leave it. Um, but I'm sure I'll I'll come to love it by the end. Ooh, he looks pissed. I don't know, when I see this dragon, I some, for some reason I think of like a rash or something. Like He's got like shingles or something all over his body. Maybe that's why he's so mad. Imagine being itchy all the time. Yikes. Just sort of stitching these together a little bit so that the uh, background doesn't look as crazy. Not crazy, but you know, I, the sky from one half of the painting should look like the sky from the other half of the painting. Alrighty, save. Um, so this has made a lot of progress in the past. I don't know, half hour. Um, I think that I'm going to save now um, and end this part just because I know we're getting to the uh, hour 15 mark and I don't want people to say, God, his pieces are so long. I don't want to watch them. <laughs> so, um, I guess I will bid you all adieu, and um, maybe I'll continue working and then just put it in the second piece. Sounds good? All right. Okay. Well, anyway, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, if you like what you see, uh, subscribe, tell your friends, get them to take a look. Hopefully, I've helped you learn something or entertained you or both. Um, but yeah, so I'll hopefully see you around again. Thanks for watching.